Hi, it's Jerry with I Love RV Life. Every single week we get questions, how do you travel with your kitties? Well, today I'm going to show you how we take Mink and Molly along with us as we go from campground to campground. It's Jerry. We get questions all the time. How do we travel with our kitties, Mink and Molly? Well, we've been traveling for six or seven years now, and uh, we've experimented with a couple things. When we first started traveling, and this only happened on two trips, we put Mink and Molly back here, and that just didn't work. Um, it wasn't that they were skittish, they just wanted to be social, and that social was climbing all over the cab while we were driving, getting up underneath our feet, once they would settle, after about an hour or so, sometimes they would get with Joan, and it wasn't a problem, but until we could get to that point, you know, it was just cumbersome with them having under my feet, and the first time we got to a rest stop and opened up the door to get out, guess what they wanted to do? You're right, they tried to escape, so that wasn't gonna work. The next thing that we tried, we took a long trip down to Florida, and we put them in those just, you know, pit carriers, uh, and that was just, it was just, that was a terrible thing for them. It was small, it was confined, it didn't have good airflow. We never did that again. That was a huge, massive mistake. So for the four to five hour trip, and we did this for five or six years, we used something called a pet tube. This is what a pet tube looks like. It doesn't look like much when it's unfurled, but we have used this pet tube up until recently for about five years. This has been a great, great option. The nice thing about the pet tube, it stretches the entire length of the back seat and gave them a ton, a ton, a ton of room. Uh, and that's really worked well for them. Uh, you'll see, I'm gonna put it in for you. Uh, you'll see that once you put your pets in there, whether you have you know small animals of any type, dogs or cats, they've got plenty of room to move around uh, in the winter when it's cold, it's enough mesh in there that uh, they can have cool temperatures and those types of things. And like I said, for the three to four hour trip, this works perfect. The downside of a pet tube or anything like this is, what do they do if they get thirsty, especially for kitties? I know with dogs, you can pull over on the side of the road, put them some water in a dish, they can get water, you can take them out to the grass and you know, let them go to the bathroom. But with kitties, that's just not possible. Um, our kitties are not going to allow that. The noises of the trucks and the cars going by frighten them. If they see another animal like a dog, they're going to get very, very frightened. And it's just not going to work in the long run for them. So what we were ending up doing was, if we say we're three hours, four hours down the road, we still got a couple hours to go, we do our rest stop leg stretch. We would get the kitties out and we would put them in the camper and let them use the litter box. But again, with the noise and everything else going on, they would never settle. I'm not even, you know, they may drink water, they may not. They were more into, let's, I think we'll, we'll hide for a couple hours until things get settled before they would ever get settled. So sometimes I don't think they would use the litter box. Sometimes they wouldn't drink water. It was a waste of time. Plus, the exit from the truck, and you think about this in a rest stop, over to our fifth wheel you know what we have to do is you know we get a large beach towel and uh, we grab them we wrap them in them cover their heads take them let them out takes a second that way they don't hear the noises they don't see the noises <laughs> long i'll make a very very short story we ended up at a campground one time and down at the base of the campground um, was a pond and I guess the people who were there before us fed the ducks and the geese and as soon as we pulled in and opened up the door up the hill they came, about 40 of them, squawking and carrying on. Molly, who is a bit of a skittish kitty, when you get her outside of the camper or outside the truck, went nuts. She bit me in the thumb, bit me in the hand, took her arm, you can't see it in the video, took her back legs, hit me in the back of the arm and ripped my arm down. I've got big scars in my arm. It was a mess. Flies up in the air, takes off, took us over an hour crawling under campers and everything else trying to get her back in. Long story short, the simple thing, nice big beach towel, ease them into it, cover them. That way they can wiggle all they want, take them into the camper, let them loose. I'm happy, Joan's happy, <laughs> Kitty's happy. Now with Mink, it's no issue. She's a chill kitty. I can walk around with her outside. If she hears noises, she don't. she might stiffen up a little bit, but she just doesn't get as frightened. So again, 
you know, what we were wanting to do is provide a comfortable, safe environment for them to travel. And this pet tube has worked well, again, for short durations. Here's the downside to it. The downside is that we can't put a litter box in here. There's not enough room. It's kind of conical shape that you'll see once we get it in. I did create something to where we could have put a water dish in there. And, and that worked out well, but it was the restroom. And look, we're getting ready to leave on a trip here in a couple of weeks, and we're gonna be on the road for six and a half, almost seven hours. It's just not humane to think that we're gonna to have to put animals back here and not give them a way to be able to get water. And if they need to be able to use the litter box, give them a little box. So I have a solution for that. Short trips have worked great, long trips not so great. But again, if you stay in the three-ish, the four-hour-ish, point A to point B trip, this pet tube is absolutely perfect for you. So let me show you how it installs, it's pretty easy. So installing the pet tube is pretty simple. Um, I have put some little markings here, driver side and passenger side. Only reason being is you actually have some straps that you put it in here to the back seat. So um, after doing this a dozen times and having to take it out and put it back in, uh, I just simply took a little marker and marked that. Um, it zips like this uh, and then it's kind of spring loaded and then it pops. So uh, look how this happens. Just pretty, pretty easy. Passenger side. Here we go. So that's you know that's how big it is. If if you take a look at that, it's a it's fairly fairly large. I'll zip it open in just a second. I I mentioned you have these straps. And you've got, I'll pull the pet tube out where you can see it just a little bit. You see there's three straps, one on each end, uh, one in the middle and uh, one on each end that you actually put behind the door. And it's pretty simple to set these in. It just takes a second. I'll just do this one just to kind of show you how it goes. It's pretty fast. Uh, you just, you know, flip your seat forward, however, you know, however your vehicle works. And, you know, these work great. Um, even if you're in a camper pulling with something like a... Um, like a Tahoe or a Jeep or something like this, you can put it back in the back cargo area. And you just take this like so and uh, tighten the strap down like that. So here you can see a bit of a close up how this, uh, how this goes. And again, it's pretty simple. And then you put one in the middle and one on each end. So here you can see, you know, once you put it in, you can look at it, it goes all the way across. It's, it's really quite large uh, and there's a lot of space. And there's just a nice big zipper that goes all the way around. And um, if you look here on the inside, there's a, there's a lot of room, you know, a lot of room that you can, you know, put your kitties in. Here's my hand, it goes all the way across the seat. So they've got the complete run of this area. You can throw, you know, pet bedding in here. There's room for that. Um, a couple beach towels, anything like that that you think your pet would prefer to have on it. And then uh, we have a water dish. Let me show you what I do with that. So this is just a plain, you know, metal water dish. What I did is I took a small piece of you know, probably about, I don't know, 10 inches by 10 inches plywood and stapled uh, like a Scotch-Brite pad on the bottom of it uh, to kind of give it some friction to keep it from sliding around. And then just took some silicone and glued it on so it would stay in place. Here you can see, you know, they've got a water, you know, a water dish, it'll stay in place. And again, for these three to four hour trips, this is an, you know, this is a reasonable environment. They're safe. Um, you can see by the, the mesh cloth um, here, all the way across the top, they get plenty of airflow. We have that mesh cloth. Here, I'll zip this up. You have airflow on the side, on both sides of these. And, um, you know, it's, it's a nice environment. And Mink and Molly haven't had any issues with this whatsoever uh, as we've traveled over, over the years. You know, just, um, again, giving them comfort. But again, it's only good for short trips. But I have come up with another solution for this. So even though we've traveled with a pet tube, gosh, five-ish, almost six-ish years now, uh, and it's served us very, very well. It's provided a comfortable and very safe environment uh, for Mink and Molly. Again, you know, with this zipped up, we can open up the doors. Um, we can we can manage how we take them out. I mean, it's very, very simple. I can, you know, open this up, pull one kitty out, wrap them in the beach towel, take them in, you know, while it's while it's zipped up until I can come out and get the other. So it's it's given them a very, very safe environment. 
The other thing too I, that I didn't mention was, well, what do you do when it's 100 degrees out and you're traveling and you pull over to rest stop, you know, and we might go inside the camper and eat. What would we do with the kitties during that period? Well, I've got a, um, a keyless uh, start on this F-350, so we can close the door and it being a diesel, it can you know, run for extended periods of times parked. And uh, I will hit the crank on that, leave the air conditioning running or the heat if it's very, very cold. And then I can keep it closed and locked. I don't have to worry about anybody gaining an, you know, access to it while we're inside or in a rest stop or something like that. And then you know, we can make sure that they stay comfortable in that environment. But again, with the pet tube, it's, it's not ideal for very, very long trips. So here's the fix. Now you're probably asking, what was the solution to be able to do something for long extended trips for the, for the kitties? Again, the goal was they needed you know, plenty of open space. We needed to have good airflow going into it. They needed to be able to have water and we needed to be able to use some form of a litter box. And the litter box was kind of the biggest challenge of all this. What did we do to be able to put a litter box back in the back of the truck and then not have to worry about you know, a, a backside hanging off the edge, maybe some spray or something like occurring and then ended up getting urine in our carpet or inside the truck. So I came up with a, a very easy solution for that. I didn't even have to make anything. It was easy to buy at Walmart. It was no problem. So we've created a platform. So what we wanted to be able to do was utilize this existing space. I didn't want to take anything out. I didn't want to take seats out. I didn't want to any, do anything. I wanted something I could put in in five minutes and take out in five minutes. And I came pretty close to getting that done. Here's what I built. This is it. I know this seems pretty elaborate and really kind of on the fancy side, but really it's just something pretty, pretty basic. Let me turn it around for you. All I did was buy a sheet of plywood. I didn't even use all of it. It was a piece of five eighths inch, kind of a, I'd call it a sheathing plywood. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. It just needs to be nice and firm, nothing else. Um, if you can see here in the video, it was just really simple put together. I could have used nails. I used pocket screws on it. I did have to do some, you know, some measuring to be able to make this fit. If you'll notice here, it does have a ledge, and you'll see why this is important once I start installing it. This is a ledge just to be able to keep it level. So this sits on the back of the uh, truck uh, back when I flip the seats up and I am going to flip the seats up and then this is down at the base and it gives me a nice level spot and then you'll notice <coughs> that it's carpeted. This is just what I call trunk carpet. Uh, you can buy it off Amazon, you can buy it in small sheets, you can buy it in rolls. I had some leftover, I didn't even have to buy this. Um, and I had some leftover from when I put it at the base that we lay our mattress on in the, in the bedroom in the fifth wheel that's out there. And then if you just take some time, you spray both sides with a little contact cement. You cut the sheet bigger than what you need and you can literally form it in these corners. And actually, once, once I get it inside, you'll see what a nice base is. Does the kitties, <laughs> do the kitties need anything this fancy? Absolutely not. I could have had bare plywood back there this wasn't necessary. It's just, I like to do stuff like this. So let's get this thing put in. I think you'll find it kind of, kind of unique how it goes in. It's pretty simple. Just takes a minute. It's pretty simple. I just uh, flip the seats up like so. And I've slid these seats forward, uh, even though they, they will slide back in just a second, just to make sure that it's easy to drop this in with no trouble. Um, so I'll take a, just a second to do that. And uh, it's just gonna fit right now. You'll notice here, I've got these bars here that the seats uh, sit on. And uh, that's where I had to do some notches. And you'll see that I've got one level here that the, um, the little base sits on. And then I've got this here. I'm not, even, I'm not even taking my mat out. I'm just leaving everything in here. I wanted this just super fast, super quick to be able to put it in. This is so simple, so easy. It doesn't weigh that much, maybe, um, I don't know, maybe 20 pounds. I could have used half inch plywood. It would have probably been a few pounds lighter. It just goes like that. That's all it is to it. Pretty simple, isn't it? 
uh, just not a whole lot to it. One of the things you don't want to have happen is this base just bouncing up and down. One of the reasons that I used 5 8 inch plywood was to have a little bit of weight so it wouldn't be bouncing when we hit bumps uh, and that makes it nice. Um, the other thing too is I don't want it sliding forward and backward as we're hitting the brakes or anything like that so I want to keep it locked in and pulled in tight and it was real simple to do that. One of the things I'll do in the description here on the YouTube video and if you go out to ilovervlife.com for today's blog I'll have links for all, everything that I use to build this, except for the plywood. You can buy that anywhere. But the carpet, if you want to buy this, what I call trunk carpet. Um, also, uh, these D-ring links, these things you buy a bag for just a couple dollars. They're pretty cheap. And then I use these little bungee cords. You can buy those off of Amazon, too, or you can buy them off of, um, they're, they're called ball bungees, like that. Uh, or you can buy them at Am or at Harbor Freight, those kinds of places. Um, put it through here like so. And that little ball goes like so, and that keeps it in place. And uh, that's that'll help, you know, hold it in place and keep it from sliding around. I put one here and I put one over on the other side. Okay. So the first task is done. Dropping in this platform takes one minute, but now I have to do something to be able to create a barrier here to keep the kitties from going forward. And the way I do that is I found uh, something called spider mesh. You can buy it for long wheelbase trucks small wheelbase trucks. Again, it looks very similar to that same material that the pet tube is made out of. This is it. You can see, you can see from here, it's a, you know, it's a mesh that you can see through, so I've got good airflow. And then it has grommets that are placed in it. Now, I did not have enough grommets to secure it to the sides and the top the way I wanted to be able to do it. Let me show you how I put the uh, grommets in here and what I'm using to be able to attach to the truck. Now to show you what I did to be able to mount this, uh, here on the top of the uh, truck there is a bar. You can tell by this, this lump that exists right here. There's a bar that runs all the way across and I took three of these D-rings and just screwed up there. It's just a little teeny hole. If I ever want to take them down, I can literally rub it with my thumb and just about hide the holes off. And I, I won't have to worry about, you know, resale value or anything like that. But this is where I mounted up at the top to hold it in place. Uh, the next thing that I did is I put these D-rings, just a handful of them here along the side. And as I start putting this in, you'll see where I had to put a few extra little D-rings. You can buy a little kit. Uh, that um, allows you to put those in and it's not a big deal. I'll show you a close-up of what that looks like. But again, you know, to make it, it probably took me an hour, you know, just to cut it and make it fit. And then again, it's just going to take me minutes to be able to put this thing in. Let me show you how. First thing I'm going to do is uh, latch this up top. I did color code it. I used my red for center just to make it simpler for me. No big deal. And these just clip in like so. It takes a second. The other challenge that I had was how to be able to attach these, uh, these spaces here on the side. You know, what could I do to be able to do that and, and make it work well without it being bunched up and those types of things. The, the next trick that I had was what do I do to be able to attach this through the D-ring? And I came up with something very, very simple. This is just a paracord. Um, and you know, if you're into paracord, <laughs> uh, it's, there's so many things you can do with it. And this is, I think they call this an Irish knot here. And uh, I, I make a little simple loop and a tie. Uh, I hope this shows up in the video. But it's, a, it's, it's pretty simple. I just thread this through here, through here, back again through the hole. Pull it up nice and tight, like so. Put two loops around it, and then just a little slip knot. So let's try one more. You'll notice that when I put this in, this is, you can see where I added these little grommets here. I just took a piece of scrap that I had left cut over and just reinforced it. Um, the first one I tried didn't work, ended up putting in a second. Again, these things are pennies a piece to be able to install them. But again, this is that little uh, Irish knot um, and just a little simple piece of paracord. If I'd have had some black, and see, I'm just going to thread it through there, thread it through here, bring it back through here, 
pull it up nice and tight one loop second loop and pull through almost like a shoelace really like you're doing a shoelace and then so if I get ready to take it loose you just pull the string and it pops loose so here's what it looks like I'll show you one more thing before I close the the video out but you can see very simple the kitties can't get through here last little simple addition uh, for the kitty pan you put the litter box in here and then I just take this a little bungee cord those D rings that I showed you earlier uh, I put one on each side and I kind of keep it in place now uh, the only thing I did here with this uh, cat pan the litter box is I did take the door out just so that it would be I guess until they get used to it it's more friendly but with these sides in here and if they go in here and again if they spray a little bit off to the side or something like that I don't have to worry about it getting here into the carpet or any of those types of things I'll probably end up putting the door back at some point in time and then I need to add the water dish looking at the final setup this is all there is to it again maybe 10 minutes 10 minutes at the most to put all this together it seems like a lot but it's not uh, the first time I put it in it took me a little bit longer uh, it takes one minute to drop this base in probably takes me another five or six minutes just to lace in that that space there and then the really nice thing about it is is once we get to our destination I don't have to take it down if I don't want to I've got a nice big flat base here plenty of room for groceries those types of things I just take the water dish and I take the kitty pan slip it into the storage area underneath our fifth wheel we go on about our business and we don't even worry about it so it's you know it's pretty easy overall so not, not a bad little setup and then when you look around up here we didn't lose any you know any of our space here into the front we've got plenty of room here you know again you can see back in the back to see how clear this mesh is you know so there's plenty of airflow air conditioning etc and then uh, you know we can set these back as far as we want we've got ample leg room it just really worked out great no problems whatsoever really kind of a nice solution for the longer hauls when we have to make them that's all it is to it really when you look at the construction of this base a couple hours that's all it took me and then it's a one-time thing it's done uh, i can use it over and over and over again if uh, we want to take it out when we get to the campground 10 minutes to take all this stuff out put it in the storage of the fifth wheel plenty of space it's not that big it's easy to do but we don't we don't because we're going to leave again in a week or 10 days maybe if we're there for a month or so uh, i might do it but then it really just depends on any if anybody's going anywhere with us um, that we need to put them in the back of the truck then i would take it out for something like that but more than likely all this is going to stay in for quite some time and you know do, am i losing any space absolutely not i'll take the the litter pan out i take the dish out we've got that big open space that you saw earlier groceries anything else that we need to haul in the back it's probably actually more spacious than with the seats down so that actually works really great and then to put it all together 10 -ish minutes uh, very very simple three carabiners my little irish knots little shoelace tie on it and then i'm done super super quick really really easy do we need to do something like this absolutely not um, we can let the kitties roam if we wanted to i don't think it's safe for them i don't think it's safe for joan and i because uh, they get under our feet and those types of things um, the kitties did not ask to travel with us you know they didn't say oh jerry joan we want to hop in the back of the truck and go to the mountains i have yet to hear them say that but once we get there they seem to enjoy it and i want to make it comfortable for them and again safe for joan and i too and there's a comfort level there of not having to worry about them opening up the door are they going to escape those types of things they're safe they're secure and we don't have to worry about it and if we're taking long trips we don't have to worry about accidents in the back seat we don't have to worry about adding more stress to them because they need to go to the restroom where they're thirsty or they're hot or they're cold whatever those types of things are and we're able to take care of their needs with this as well so i think that's important for your pets take care of them love them and give them a safe environment uh, and a comfortable environment while you're traveling whether you're in a class a b or c whether you're pulling a fifth wheel or you're pulling a trailer there's something you can do to make them safe give them plenty of space and make it comfortable whether you got puppies or kitties you know you can take care of them for that type of thing so again don't take anything away from them don't take anything away from us everybody's comfortable and that's the that's the objective as we're traveling be as comfortable as possible well i hope you found this video helpful uh, oh one last thing what does it look like when we're going down the road here let me show you this 
this is when uh, Joan and I were going up to the mountains a couple weeks ago, and you can actually see the camera view as it's shooting in the back. But anyway, that's what it looks like from there. We don't take anything away from the front. It's just absolutely fantastic. Well, I hope you found this helpful. There's all kinds of projects and mods. Some are very elaborate. Some are very simple. Sometimes it's just thinking through the process of what you're trying to do. And look, I follow the KISS method. Keep it simple, stupid, pointing the finger at me. Uh, don't make it elaborate. Don't make it hard. Don't make it something that takes hours to put in and hours to take out. Don't make it difficult to store. Any of those types of things. Slip in, get your job done, get on down the road. That's, that's kind of our objective of what we're trying to do. I hope you found this video helpful. And uh, I know that Mink and Molly are looking forward to heading down the road. Oh, I'm sitting out here now uh, in the garage in this Georgia humid heat. And we're leaving in a couple weeks going to the mountains. Whew, am I so ready. I do these types of things to be able to help you get ideas on travel. And of course, the main reason I do it is because I just love RV life.